Hi, my name is Roberta Rose, and this is my body of work. It's called Circles of Life, and it's about things that were going on, COVID and post-COVID. And it's more about the positive aspects, even though everybody has suffered loss and other things that weren't good. But overall, I think we're through the worst, and we've learned a lot since then and because of this time. So that's what this body of work is really about. What led me to be an artist was when I was a kid. And I grew up in Elizabeth in New Jersey, and it was already multicultural, but we didn't call it that then. We just knew it was our neighborhood. And I, I always had art in school, and my, my mother bought me oil paints when I was a kid. And so I was, I was just naturally creative. And I think part of it was because I was an only child. So I had to entertain myself a lot. So I was in my head a lot, and it caused me to be creative. And all through grammar school, middle school, high school, I always majored in art classes. I had some really great teachers. And then I went on to Kane University for formal education and the Art Students League. And I took workshops through the years. And I had, we had our own artist group in Clinton. And we did that for 10 years. And our instructor was Nancy Albin. And she was a fabulous teacher and a friend. And then I branched out on my own and started to find my way and my own style. And, and I just keep working. <laughs> It was very freeing there because at Kane, you know, it was a formal education and there was a place for it and I really enjoyed it. But I worked in mixed media early on and they didn't have any courses in that. You know, we had painting and sculpture and drawing and uh, all of them were very good, but they weren't quite what I was looking for. So when I went to the Art Students League, we had this fabulous uh, instructor Mariano Del Rosario, he was from the Philippines, but he lived in New York City and he was an artist and it was much more open. You sat in a circle, he talked a little bit, but then he really encouraged you to work on your own and you could call him when you, when you needed help or you wanted him to come over and see what you're doing. But if you wanted to just sit there and work by yourself, he was good with it. And also, you didn't get graded, so you didn't have the pressure of having to do schoolwork. You just did what you wanted, and I thought it was the best experience I ever had. Yeah, I chose circles of life rather than circle of life, because circle of life is more about, you know, birth, life, and death. You know, it, where circles of life is about all the different emotions of life rather than just the physical beginning and end, you know, like, and that's with a lot of these things, what well, all of them represent, you know, circles that you're, when your head's spinning, circles when you're angry, you know, like the chaos, and circles when you, when you need to be calm, and you, you know, it, it's really about the pattern or patterns of all the different emotions that people went through, especially during COVID, because, you know, it was something that nobody ever went through in our lifetime, and there was a lot to process. Yeah, sure. This one is called Breathe. And it's one of the calming ones. Uh, and I put Breathe, the, I wrote it twice because Breathe says one thing, but if you say Breathe, Breathe, you exhale. And that's the calming. And I wanted this to reflect the calming, like when, you're, when your mind starts to circle too much and you need to kind of bring it down. And that's why I chose just a few colors, you know, and it's, it's in the cool tones, but it's not too busy and it just reflects more of that mood, you know, that, like calm where you can just shut your eyes. It's not too busy and it's really reflective of just needing a little bit of meditative space. Yeah, I added some text into it for that reason so that there would be a little more depth to the work. You know, you can just look at some of the words and they don't always coordinate together, but it just gives you like a little hidden message or just something to focus on, something that humanizes it. You know, like 
these works are abstract, but they're not total abstraction. There's some representation in, in them, in most of them, not all of them. And I just wanted that little touch of that so that people could kind of relate to them more. But you know, when you're working out of your own head, you have those moments where you think that everybody's going to know what you're saying, and then other times, you know, you realize to yourself that people are going to interpret it their own way, but you hope for the best that, that people interpret it kind of the way you meant it, you know, and don't look at it and say, what the hell is that, you know? <laughs> but, so it feels great when I know that I've accomplished the feeling. Yeah, that people, so thank you. I think it's really interesting because most artists, if not all the artists I've seen, have touched upon COVID or post-COVID yeah. topics. And I remember when we were in it and I started to do work that related to it, and I first I thought, I don't know if I really want to do COVID because everybody's going to, all the artists are going to be doing COVID. And then I realized, no, it's just such an important part of yeah. life yeah. and history, and, and you're part of it. How could you not be part of it? So I wanted to have my own contribution and my own take on it. And I realize as an artist, every artist is going to be different anyway. And I think that the work that's going on today, some of it is fabulous. Yeah, it really is. I think it's more about what I wasn't seeing. Because when we're in lockdown, all of a sudden you realize it, it, it was a real sombering feeling to know that every gallery everywhere in, on, on the earth was closed. You know, like there was just something about knowing that even if you went to another town, state, or country, you aren't going to see any art. So I started to get involved more with YouTube because, you know, you don't want to lose the connection of that because I was really missing it. And there's some great artists on there that I really like, um, like Louise Fletcher. She's a British artist. She does a lot of different... I, I like her abstracts. I know she does representational, but I haven't really watched that. I like her techniques, and I like the way that she's really kind when she talks. So that you want to feel like everybody's in it together in a, in a good way. And uh, then there's Jose uh, Parla. He's terrific. He's a, um, a Cuban artist, and he has work. He, he really started as really making it big in Atlanta, Georgia. And he does very large paintings, and he's got them all over the world now. And he has a lot of, he's even got some sculptures in New York City that are by the High Line, and I don't know if they're still there. So I started, you know, getting influenced by these people, and there's a great fiber art group in Australia, and Lorna Crane is like, oh, her stuff is just superb, and she's influencing the continuation of the body of work that this has evolved into. That'll be another show. And, yeah, more to come. <laughs> more to come. Ah, asking me about the dream catcher art. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, I'm aware of it. Uh, I know people that make dream catchers, and it's not so much that I was influenced by it as much as that I did want the body of work to be dreamy. I like my art basically to be ethereal for the most mm -hmm. part, no matter what kind of genre I'm in. And, and that's what a lot of people like. I like where it's, it's sort of deconstructed, but not totally. And then I add elements in, and I take some out. And, but I do, I like it where you look, and the more you look at it, the more you see, and the more you can go in. Yes. But yet, you don't feel like it's screaming at you. It's not bold. It's not, you know, in your face sort of thing. Yeah, where you, and, and it is that dreamy effect or that dream-like effect, you know, where you're... I like to feel that the, that the work is connected to other worlds, too, you know, like, you know, where you're working with your subconscious, you're working with something larger than yourself. Yeah, it is that sort of connection because, well, first of all, not that I don't have enough stuff to open an art store, but... <laughs> It wasn't like you could go down to Michael's or Hobby Lobby or uh, any store to buy any brushes or supplies. Well, thank God I got a boatload of stuff. But that also made me think about, you know, what can I use that I have? And what could I do to make it more interesting? And some of it was influenced by some of the artists that I watch on YouTube because a lot of the artists do 
go out of their way to use natural materials. And it has nothing to do with COVID. It's just, you know, making it more organic. And I like that feeling. So I, and I thought it would be a great way to experiment and get into the work more deeply. So it's been fun. Yeah, this is um, The Chosen Path is the title. And I just made a road. And I made it very subtle. So I put this, you can choose the straight or the long and winding. You know, just choices. It's about choices. Like, do you want to go on a straight path? Or do you want to go into the more unknown winding and roadless traveled kind of feeling, you know? Because I felt that during COVID, you know, even when we started to come out of it, it didn't go back to where it was. It never will. So I wanted to think about it as like a new beginning and a new way of doing things, a new way of, of going around. And, and it's just different. So that's where that came in. And this one is um, Travel Dreams number two. And it really was basically about, I had a great magazine, an old uh, antique 50s magazine with travel. And they had all these cool ads like, we discovered Alaska and it shows like, you know, like those like kind of cliche ads. Like I looked at this magazine and I thought I'd like to incorporate that in a way with the work because we were traveling virtually. Like I was sitting there watching like walking tours of Rome and walking tours of Japan and all different ones because, you know, when you're sitting home day in and day out, I, I, I love the time to create as an artist, but sometimes, you know, you just miss going out. Miss, I, I miss travel because I've traveled a lot in my life. So I thought, why not have like a, like a virtual dream-like travel, you know, like the, you know, the, the virtual travel or just the daydream travel. So that's, that's really what that was about. And just the reflection of, of like old letters and, and, and different things and um, just that pretend feeling like, you know, what if you went to these places or, or, or other places? And that's why I even had the circle, like that little window so that you could kind of slip in and be like, be like the twilight zone, you know? <laughs> yeah. I have so many influences, I don't know where to begin, so I'll just pop out a few. Uh, Robert Rauschenberg is my ultimate favorite. He is the true king of collage. He is the king. You know, and even the earlier influences like the Renaissance period and even um, some ancient art that they found in caves. And so all of those things, all of these people are influences. The pop artists, I was crazy about them. You know, I remember, you know, being young and, and liking Andy Warhol's things and op art and uh, he, Mondrian, I thought he was great. Um, Calder, all these people. Because I had mobiles hanging in my room. I was always bugging my mother if I could put them up. And... <laughs> so, I, you know, all of these people are big influences. And, uh, you know, because I had a lot of art history and even as a kid, you know, having all those different influences. And I feel like they build upon each other, like each time period. And I love the Impressionists and then you know, they were so picked on at the time because they, you know, weren't traditional representational artists. And then even later on, people, you know, went into abstract expressionist and the Forbes and all the different periods. Each one built upon the, the artists before them. So I look at it as one big continuum and I think they're all wonderful. If I had to pick one, it would be a, a cross between Rauschenberg and Jim Dine. Okay, that's great. Yeah, they will always be. <laughs> they'll they'll always be the closest artist to my heart, and we're lucky enough when we went to New York. I actually I actually got to wave to Jim Dine one time, <laughs> and I didn't know it was him at first. <laughs> I don't know 
oh, I just saw some guy hanging out the gallery window. He looked at me and he waved and I'm waving back, you know? And then I realized, and then all of a sudden it hit me because I had done a paper on him in college. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, it's Jim Dime. <laughs> uh, the biggest takeaway for me was that he wasn't afraid to change what he was doing. I mean, he was always changing up his art and it was always different and he, he was fearless about, you know, like some artists find their niche and they kind of stick with it and they, they have kind of like one style and, and if it works for them, that's fine, I guess, you know, but I like artists who aren't afraid to change and evolve and he, he's one of those guys. Yeah, and they, you know, and you gotta be ready for criticism because some of your old art people will, you know, not be, they're not, then they won't like it, yeah, but I think that artists that are really good and that the challenge themselves end up doing better anyway, you know, it's just the mindset and I think that it makes them better because you grow. So, yeah, this is the, the Travel Dreams number one. Uh, this, this one I started first, but that one I started almost simultaneously, just a little bit behind this. Um, but this was the first one and once I started getting into this whole thing, like, you know, here you, you got, what does it say here? Canadian Pacific Comfort. And I just, that was like, when I read that title, I'm like, you could just picture driving in some like big old American car from the 50s, going across the United States in comfort. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what started right here. And then I said to myself, but you know, it's not just about that, it's more than that. But I thought, again, you know, it. It brings you to a, a point of reference of, of travel, you know, but in a dream type of way because, you know, whether you have a, a van or a car or whatever you had, you weren't going anywhere during COVID. So, you know, it was more just about having the fantasy of it. And it was a lonely time and that's why I added just friends. That one I did intentionally put in because we weren't seeing our friends, you know, and even though I was talking to people, I, I missed the camaraderie of actually hanging out with people. So I put that in kind of as, I guess like a reminder, you know, just to stay connected. So that's what it's I It's a good do. question. How did I make the dark circles? I used uh, the, 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 you know, the decorative grasses. The, I used the tufts from them. In the, in the, in the fall, they, they sprout up these tufts and then you wait until they dry. Yeah, so you wait till the plumes dry, and then I use them with uh, flowing, uh, the, the more fluid, uh, not ink, but the acrylic fluid okay. uh, body, because it's, you want it to be thinner, you know, because the regular acrylics are a little too thick, and I didn't want to water it down because then it would mush, so I just use that body of work. and. I love it because there's, there, when you use other materials that aren't brushes, you're going to get marks that brushes can't make. Yeah, this and one is a bit, a little bit more of the frustrated side of COVID because, you know, let's face it, it, it you're not calm all the time. You're going through a whole myriad of emotions at different times, different days, different situations. So I put, and, and what made me more crazy was all the, the political rhetoric and all the, the nonsense and, and people who didn't even believe that the COVID was a real thing. And I had to stop watching this stuff because it was making me worse. And, and that's what I put, that's why it's titled like that, just stop now. And that's what it meant, just stop now. And I put now twice because, you know, like I'd, I'd be looking at TV sometime, I'd be like, oh, just stop. And then I just would shut it off or put something else on or put music on or just start to work with the art. But that's why I also put these pieces, which are almost like an Asian influence. It's almost like yin and yang. It's a little bit on the you know Japanese feeling of calm. Again, I wanted, I wanted it to be just stopped now, but I wanted the calm to come in after, once you've made the statement then you can calm your mind, you, you shut it off or you change, you change what you're watching or you change where your head is at because of it. 
And then that's like, brings you right back to, oh, calm, calm. It's just more about having a little bit of color because it was more about nothing's black and white. So you put that in and it just kind of re represents that nothing in life is black and white. So I just put little splotches in to, to bring it together, to make it more cohesive. Sometimes I feel the most thing that influences me with this body of work is the subconscious. It's more about taking what you've learned traditionally about art and kind of going in the opposite direction and s sort of unlearning what you've learned traditionally, but yet you know it's there because you had to have the, the foundation and the bones of that to get to the part where you can deconstruct or change it or work differently with it. So with this, it was, I looked at it because again, it's, it, it, it's more about the calming effect and that's why I call it the calm after the storm. Because even though we're still going through COVID, we're, you know, it's not gone, but we're not in lockdown. We're not in that, you know, thick of it anymore, at least as far as, thank God, so far. And I wanted something to reflect that we're going into a better part of it you know, or, or coming out of it. So it's, I put the one representational piece that I have here I knew it needed something else. I wasn't no, sure what it, it still was. needs a little something. So I happen to have a plant in my studio and the, the light in the morning, the way it hit the plant made a shadow on here. And I thought the shadow looked incredible. So I traced the shadow, but I didn't want to make it dark. I didn't want it to change the lightness of the ethereal dreamlike quality. So I just traced it and then I painted in white because I wanted it to stay in that same feeling. I didn't want it to be too contrasty, if that makes sense. You know, when the shadow hit it, I was like, oh, that's it, you know? And it, it was so random. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like, you know, like spirit world sent me this this image and said, hey, you know, go with that. <laughs> and I did, and, and I was really pleased that, you know, because I thought, well, what if it looks hokey? But I, it didn't, you know, so it came out fine. Here is Japanese rice paper, and you take incense sticks, and you light them, and you, you can just burn, and you could make, you could make it uneven, you could make it bigger or smaller. And, uh, and they, you know, I learned that on YouTube. And the one thing I learned too is like, make sure you have a little dish of water <laughs> so, it doesn't, so it doesn't start on fire. <laughs> Cause every now and then like a little piece would come and singe me and I'm like, ah. <laughs> but, I, but I thought that it would just look so wonderful because it's, it just makes you go, go through the painting. You're not just looking at it from the surface. It's so delicate. Sometimes it's the use of the, of the material. Other times, you know, like if I needed more inspiration, I put on Sonic Yogi. Sonic Yogi is, is so meditative and, you know, and you can close your eyes and just get into the whole vibration and say the prayer. It's not, and I, I would open with that in my studio. I would light a candle and do my sonic yogi prayer and just sit and listen to the music. And that would just put me right in the space that I needed to be mentally, emotionally, and subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And then I just felt like, you, you just felt, I felt guided by it, you know, so. And, and the material too, is it, it's its own reward. It's, it's, it's you know, I, I got a lot of material and I like using the different papers and, you know, and, and printing and drawing and, 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 and I like the challenge of like, you know, well, oh, I got this paper, what can I do with this? But it's not, but it's not so much of just sitting there like, gee, what, what can I do with this and just glue it down? It's more about just playing with the papers and shifting them on your, your table and seeing what kind of images start to come through it, you know? And, and then it just starts to build on itself and
And you just, if, you're, if you can keep your mind open and, and not get distracted, which is very hard when you've got barking dogs and lawn mowers and, you know, different noises, but you learn that, that you can make all that stuff fade in the background when you yeah. go into the space. And, and that keeps it quiet. Other median, medias that I like working in, are, um, I use a lot of different mediums. Generally speaking, I like acrylic paint the best, but uh, I also don't mind using, you know, antique papers, uh, all different kinds of wax papers, onion skin, uh, encaustic wax. That's probably my second favorite medium, as I do like working with the wax, because you can create this kind of ethereal feeling but in a different way because then you could take little pieces of of papers and make them more translucent because once something gets wet in the wax like like uh, I don't know pieces of like gift wrap or um, napkins or really thin papers tracing papers you can draw on them and you put it in the wax and whew, it just goes right in so it's it, it, it's very multi-layered and nothing really gets lost in it unless you want it to, like if you don't want it to be too busy, which can happen with encaustic, because you're adding a lot of elements in it, and it can get busy real quick, but all you gotta do is just put on more wax. And then you could, you could make it recede into almost oblivion. But, <laughs> but if it starts to be too much, you can scrape the wax off. You just let it dry a little bit, and you can scrape some off, so you can control if, control that part of it and some of it you can't which is kind of the fun part because you know you want some of it to just be its own magic you know because it's magic yeah talking about color choices I like to work with just a few colors but then sometimes I add in more and again I, then I do that thing where you can abstract some of it or just kind of keep coding it so that even there are times when I use bright colors, but I like dreamier colors better, or bright colors, and then I like to mute them down myself. Yes. And that's what I did here. Like, I, it, it, this piece I did when I was very upset. I, I, you know, I found out that I had to move, there was a lot going on, and I was, I was angry. I was, it was like it took, it took over, it just took over, and it became its own thing and, and then I was in a space where I wasn't angry anymore and I wasn't you know losing my mind and I just started to, to again fall into like a calm through the chaos and that's why I named that chaos because it did come out of chaos and I enjoyed working with it and again I, I used I used different grasses to do this and, and different markers and it's more colorful than this or some of my other work because there was that that fire in my soul from the the anger and the energy yeah it was it was, it was like as an intense day as I could have and usually when I when I feel like that I can't create or even focus but I was able to just go in and channel it and focus it and and I just then I and, and then that, that anger started to just turn into like this this feeling of of joy and subconscious being and knowing somewhere in my head that I'm gonna get past this and it's it's gonna be all right, but right now it's chaos. Mm -hmm. And I and I enjoyed using a little bit more of a hotter colors, you know. I was able to complete this in one day. I just, wow. um, and I, I, I can say that all the others are not one day things. But this one, I just kept going. I just kept going and, and going and going. And, and I just, it consumed me. And, and the more it consumed me, the more I, did, I just wanted to keep going. And I think the good part about it was not only being able to control this, out of control energy, but that I was enjoying the outcome of what it was what it was starting to look like, right. and 
Yeah, it, it, I took, yeah, it wasn't taking something negative and making it positive, but also um, because I was trying to deal with the emotions more, I wasn't getting caught up and, and hung up on like, what do I do here, what do I do there? I wasn't piecemealing this. I was just going, yeah. you know, like just, I wasn't thinking it at all, you know, like I, it was like, I was on automatic pilot <laughs> and I, and then, and you know, it was one of those things when I was done, I was like, okay. <laughs> and uh, this one here was, you know, I wasn't in chaos like I was here. This was a little bit more, this inner circle, outer, outer circle. And it's, it's, you know, again, emotional, like, you know, what are you feeling inside and, and, and what's going on around you outside? So, you know, again, the combination, you know, a little push-pull, yin-yang kind of thing. And I liked it just being black and white. And then I said, no, I, I need another touch of something to bring out the emotion more. So that's when I just put in some, a little bit of wording and, and the goal. I love to be able to express myself through art because I feel like I do that better than anything else. So that, that's its own drive. Um, most people in life find something that they're good at, uh, whether it's singing or poetry or draftsmanship or whatever. And I love music, but I don't sing and I don't play. Uh, it's just never going to happen. But I do find that when I go towards art, I'm, I'm just very driven to to take something and, and create. Uh, it's something that I've had since I was a kid, you know, probably lifelong. So it's just part of who I am. It's 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 natural to me. So. It's always a drive, you know, and, and I'm happiest when I'm creating and I'm happiest when I'm making art. And, you know, even if I'm having a, a bad day with art or something's not coming out right or you're frustrated or you're unfocused, it's still good. It still cleanses me and makes me feel like I have some kind of purpose. So, yeah, that's always a drive. Absolutely. Yeah playing with paper or I just start printing and the next thing you know you got a, a desk full of stuff you know and you're looking at it all and I think it's just natural that when you are working with uh, creativity that, that some things start to be like signs and you, you know like even if you're just playing with paper or playing with the canvas certain things start to emerge and, you know and then you realize that this, this looks good with this, and maybe this would look good with that. Maybe it won't. And then you just start layering with it. And, you know, sometimes, like anything, you know, like I'll, I'll be putting things together and it looks great, and other times you put things together and it's like, mm, what was I thinking? And, you know, you, you don't always know. But once, once something starts to be like signs, it, it starts to form a pattern to me. And then I just follow it. You know, it's, it's like kind of like, like as if you're taking a road trip and, you know, you're just going. And so, you know, once I start to play with the materials, I, I like the building up and, and seeing where it's going to go. Like, I never have like a real preconceived notion of, you know, like I don't look and say, oh, I'm going to make this abstract art. I just start to piece things together and, and follow it. Yeah, and... And I love working with pencil, and I love working with paint, and I like inks, and and these marks I made with like bottle caps. You just, but you you can just do it kind of sloppy, you know. You know, I didn't want a perfect image, so you can just move it around and make it a little wonky, and then it it just you know morphs into something. It, it's sort of like a circle, but it's not a perfect circle. Sometimes I like a perfect circle. Sometimes I don't. And then that when I use the bottom of a brush. Instead of using the brush end, I used the wood end and just swirled it. And I liked, you know, but I'll do them on papers and they're all lined up. And, and then, you know, then I start seeing, well, what would look nice with what, you know, or, or what makes sense to me. And, and, you know, like a lot of things where you're just printing and, 
And then, you know, it, it just turns into that kind of thing where, you know, you add a little piece here and you paint a little there and, and you just build it up. And if you trust in your, your inner self, it'll bring you where you're, supposed, where you're supposed to go. That's how I think about art. So I've always liked making altered books. I started making them about 22 years ago. And I, I took a course in it, and I've just been going ever since. And I feel like it's nice to have a different body of work but still relates to wall art so I like to just kind of mix it up and very seldom do I do a show of any genre of work without having my trusty altered book and I like it because it's it's a different way of working but it still uses the same principles and rules like I do with the the other body of work but putting it in the book is a different feeling because each page becomes its own little piece of art. And then because you're doing a book, it's a little more challenging because it's like wall art, but like many of them all in one. So you want to keep that having a, a flow and, and, and trying to keep a cohesive body of work. And the book is different than just doing one piece at a time or two pieces at a time on canvas. But it's, it's also fun because Again, you know, using all kinds of scraps and stash finds, and you, that gives you the opportunity to play with all those little pieces that are in baggies and drawers and binders. And it's a little bit more freeing because it's, it's, each page is small, so like you can create a page in, in, in a shorter amount of time. And if you want, you can just put it down or you can you know, go on to the next page or you can skip around. Because sometimes I skip around. And, you know, and, and again, it, it, you just kind of go with the flow. And the, so the book is just about life and, and different aspects of it. And again, you know, a more positive spin on it. You know, it's, this book is, you know, unlike the other art, I used more, you know, dark pages. But it's not dark in nature as far as the message goes. It's, it's not dark as, like, dark in your head. Right. It's just more like, maybe sort of like, sort of like, maybe like the way you would feel it in, in, at nighttime. No, books are inviting, yeah. or I think they should be. Yeah. Um, even if I made a book that's a little bit more uh, frail or... or I'll, there was a time where I made a big book and I just had gloves by it because I didn't want any fingerprints all over it. But that's because it was made with materials and it was very light in color. But yeah, books are like, you know, when people look at them and they say, oh, can I look at that closer or touch it? I'm like, pick it up, flip through it. And that's the difference too than wall art. You can, you can play with it, you can sit with it, you can move it around, you can thumb through it and... It's, it's a different feeling, and yet it's still part of a bigger show, you know. But I, yeah, I love making altered books and having people look at them and flip through it and ask questions or, yeah, all of, all of it, you know, books are great. It sums up the whole feeling of the show and the hopefulness. The, that's, I wanted it to just have that positive feeling, you know, that, to, to have that kind of hope and, and serenity, to, to have peace after such a turbulent time in our lives, something that we've never experienced in our lifetime, hopefully we'll never experience badly again. Um, but it's changed the world forever, you know. Um, there are things that, you know, can't, can't be recaptured the same way, you know, like the, the so-called pause. I mean, as an artist, I really loved it because it gave me a lot of time to work and focus on myself, but there were a lot of people who were lonely, who were sick, and, and there was a lot going on that, you know, wasn't positive. So, but now that we're moving on in a different direction, I hope that people someday look back at this time period and, and be kinder and better. You know, and I don't know if that's going to happen. Some things that are going on in the world are not 
the way I thought it would be post-COVID. I thought we we're going to have a kinder, gentler uh, goings on, and but you know, but then I also realized that it's made my personal bonds with people tighter. You know, like the people that are you know friends of mine or family. I think it's opened them up and me up to like if if you if you feel like you love somebody, you say it more. You know, and, and I I look at it as like we got this time together, you know, and I think that everybody should try to be their best, you know, no matter what's going on, because, you know, life's changed, but it doesn't mean we can't be better.